you can pre-order Modern Horizons 3 using my link in the description. Hi everyone, I'm Nietzsche Hone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10. Normally in this series, I take a look at Magic's competitive history, but every time a new set comes out, I also do a Top 10 giving my picks for the biggest bombs in the new limited format. In Magic, a bomb is a good thing. It's a card so powerful that it drastically increases your chances of winning the game and can even pull you ahead from behind. In other words, these are the cards you most want in your sealed pool or to see as your pack one, pick one in draft. Obviously, the cards in this video are at higher rarities. If you're looking for a deeper dive into the format, including my evaluation for every single card in it, check out my set review. I did restrict myself to the main set in this top 10, so I'm not going to be talking about cards from the bonus sheets, only cards from the main set of Modern Horizons 3. All right, without further ado, here are my picks for the 10 biggest bombs in the format. First up, we've got Shilgengar, Sire of Famine. Obviously, he starts with amazing stats as a 5-mana 6-6 six, six flyer. That's a card that can win the game in the air quite quickly, but he's got a whole lot more than that going on. He can give up creatures to give you blood tokens. He's even better at giving you blood tokens if you sacrifice an angel. The set also has a pretty big artifact theme, including in black, so blood tokens have more value than they normally would. And in blue-black, the main theme is about drawing cards, and obviously blood tokens help you do that too. The thing I really like about Shilgengar is that his other ability might sound kind of far-fetched, but I think it's actually going to come up sometimes. If you draw Shilgengar late, it's not out of the question that you're able to make a bunch of blood tokens by sacking your creatures, and then reanimate everything from your graveyard, including the creatures you just sacrificed. It's not going to come up all the time. Most of the time, he's just going to be a really efficient flyer that can generate value with blood tokens, and that's already great. But he does have this occasional crazy play where he just reanimates your whole graveyard, and it's going to happen, I think, more often than you'd expect. At number nine, I have Genku, Future Shaper. This card is an insane value engine because every time you have a non-token permanent you control leave the battlefield, you get to generate a pretty nice creature token. Any of these options is quite good. And the thing that's really nice about Genku is it doesn't matter how they leave the battlefield. They can die, they can be sacrificed, they can be exiled, they can be blinked. It doesn't matter. You're going to get value no matter how the thing leaves the battlefield. So the turn you play Genku, you're often going to be able to attack, and suddenly any trade your opponent can make just looks miserable, so they just have to take the attack. So you do get value out of Genku right away, especially if you're in a spot where they can't really just take the hit anyway, in which case they're in a ton of trouble. And Genku would probably have just been an honorable mention on this list if things ended here. But even if you're in a spot where your opponent refuses to trade with your creatures to give you tokens... You can just start pumping mana into this to buff your entire board with plus and plus one counters, and that's what really pushes it into the bomb range. It's already a great card without that ability, but the activated ability to buff the entire board definitely pushes Genku to the point where it's just one of the strongest cards in the set. At number eight, I've got Ajani Nakatl Pariah. So you start out here with like an insanely efficient card. Two mana, one, two that makes a two, one. That already is just a super powerful card based on rate. Like, if you play this on turn two, your opponent's in a world of hurt. And even when you play it later, you get two bodies for the price of one card, so it's very hard for your opponent to come out ahead against a Johnny. And that's made even more painful for them by the fact that if the cat token, or any other cat you have other than a Johnny dies, he transforms into a pretty powerful planeswalker, one that can buff all of your cats, and one that can make a cat warrior creature token to protect him. And if you happen to have another red permanent around, it even does damage equal to its power to any target, which is crazy. And the minus four isn't too shabby either, and you can get there pretty quickly. You end up paying two mana for a crazy good Planeswalker. And this is another case, kind of like with Genku, where your opponent can just sort of not let your cat die so that you never get the Planeswalker. But if they are warping their game that much, that means they're just taking two from it every turn or not attacking you because they're worried about a Johnny. And you're just going to end up getting a two for one out of this at worst most of the time. And a lot of the time you're going to be able to transform this and end up just taking over the game completely. At number seven, I've got Nadu Winged Wisdom. So this is another card with a really great rate. It's a three mana, three, four flyer. But then it has this great ability where anytime one of your creatures becomes a target of a spell or ability, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, you put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you put it into your hand. So you either ramp your mana and it does come into play untapped, or draw a card. 
Either way, you're netting a card anytime one of your creatures gets targeted by anything, and this means if your opponent wants to kill Nadu, they are inherently getting two for one. And the thing that really makes Nadu great is that it doesn't only count your opponent targeting your stuff. So if you have a fight spell and you target your own Nadu with it, you get to get this trigger in addition to probably killing your opponent's creature. And it works with combat tricks too. Nadu is just this card value engine that has a floor as a two for one. And that just makes it really hard not to be one of the best cards in the format. At number six, I've got Arna Kenarud, Sky Captain. So five mana, four, four flying lifelink, another really great starting point. And then it has Ward, discard a card. So this means, like Nadu, your opponent has to two for one themselves if they ever want to remove Arna Kenarud. So that's kind of the floor here. And the ceiling is a huge creature that makes the game get out of reach in a hurry as a result of having both flying and lifelink, which are a real pain to deal with. It makes races pretty impossible if your opponent is just flying over and hitting you and creating an eight point gap in life totals every time they do. Then you throw in this additional upside where if you have a modified creature attack, you get to double the number of each kind of counter on it. And for each non-token permanent attached to it, which means equipment and auras, you get to create a token that's a copy of that permanent attached to that creature. This format has a ton of modifications in it, especially in the form of plus and plus one counters and bestow creatures. So you're going to play Arna Kenarud a lot of the time and already have something in play that can benefit from attacking now that she's in play and have a much better attack because of her trigger. So she generates value immediately. Her floor is basically a two for one. And even all alone, she can create huge problems for your opponent. That's what makes her so good. The thing that holds her back is that she is three different colors of mana. And one of those colors isn't green. So fixing for her isn't as easy as some other three color cards. But the ceiling here is just so high that, you know, you're going to pick up some fixing and you're going to find a way to play her because she's pretty busted. At number five, I've got Detectives Phoenix. So once again, we start with a great rate. A three mana 2-2 two -two with Flying and Haste is an amazing card that you would play in every single one of your limited decks. Obviously, things don't end there, though. You can also bestow the Phoenix, which means you can play it as an aura. In this case, for one red mana and you collect Evidence 6. And one of the really nice things about bestow is that if the creature that you are bestowing with this now aura dies, your aura now turns back into Detective's Phoenix. And if that was all we had going on here, Detective's Phoenix wouldn't be a bomb, but what pushes it into that range is the ability to come back from the graveyard, because of course it's a phoenix, but it does it in a different way because it can only be bestowed from the graveyard. Now, that's not always better than being able to bring the phoenix back and cast it as a creature or whatever, but it often will be because you'll be able to play a creature, pay one red, exile stuff from your graveyard, and give whatever new creature you just played, plus two, plus two, flying in haste, and then if your opponent can deal with that creature before it kills them, you get the phoenix back and you can start all over. So the detective's phoenix just will not go away and it will keep buffing your creatures and keep turning into a phoenix and attacking your opponent and... That makes it incredibly difficult to contend with because it just won't leave you alone if you're playing against it. Next up, we've got Flage, Titan of Fire's Fury. So the baseline here is that this is a three mana, sorcery speed, lightning helix. That's a card you're always going to play. It's just very powerful. It's removal that can gain you life. It can even finish off your opponent. But of course, like the other Elder Giants it's modeled after, it can escape from your graveyard if you pay two red and two white and exile five other cards from your graveyard. If you do that, you of course get that trigger again, but anytime you attack, you're gonna get it as well. Escaping isn't always easy, and it's not like red-white is the color pair that's the best at loading the graveyard, but the fact is you can play this early as a good removal spell, and then in the mid to late game, it comes back and just completely takes over the game. At number three, I have Harragast, Erupting Null Kite. So this card is colorless, but it's really only going to be a bomb level card if you're playing it in a red deck because you need to have access to Emerge. Otherwise, Harragast just costs too much mana. But if you do have access to Emerge, you can play Harragast on turn like six reasonably easily. And if you do that, your hand has probably been expended and then you get to reload your hand and you have a 6-6 six, six flyer in play. That also happens to give a merge to all of your creature spells. That last part is the least important of all of this. The big thing is just that you get a big flyer that draws you three cards. That in and of itself is more than enough to make Harragast a bomb. Giving your other things a merge is nice, but it's not where most of this card's value comes from, and it doesn't really need to be. If Harragast can't finish the game on his own, the three cards he draws you probably can. 
And number two, I have Abstruse Appropriation. So this instant lets you exile a non-land permanent, and then you can cast that card for as long as it remains exiled, and you may spend colorless mana as though it remain of any color to cast the spell. In other words, it's an awesome removal spell as a baseline that can exile any non-land permanent, no questions asked. That would be a really good removal spell, but certainly not a bomb. But then you can just cast the thing that you exiled. It's kind of like a roundabout mind control effect in black-white, and that's just one of the most powerful things you can do in Magic. It's going to be pretty difficult for your opponent to win after you destroy their best non-land permanent and then cast it for yourself. However, there is still one card that I think is better than Abstruse Appropriation in the set. Before we get there, though, there are some honorable mentions. These are the cards that received a bomb grade in my set review, but didn't quite make my top 10. And at number one, I have Crabomination. So... Set the Emerge from Artifact part aside here. What Crabomination does is enters the battlefield, makes your opponent exile the top card of their library, a random card from their graveyard, and a random card from their hand. Then you can cast a spell from among cards exiled that way without paying its mana cost. In other words, you play a 6 mana 5-5 five five and then get to cast a spell for free. It is somewhat random, but between the three different exile effects, you're likely to have something awesome to cast for free. And Crabomination is at its best when your opponent does have a card to get exiled from their hand, even if it's not the card you want to play. If you do that, it means you're getting a 3 for 1, because your opponent loses a card in hand, then you cast one of their cards for free, and you have this huge body in play. But even when that's not the case, Crabomination is a super efficient, super powerful 2 for 1 that is going to end the game most of the time with its Enter the Battlefield ability. Then we throw in the Emerge from Artifact upside, and you have an even better card, because sometimes you'll be able to power it out even earlier, which increases the chances of you getting that 3-for-1, because your opponent is more likely to still have a card in their hand if you're playing this on, like, turn 5 instead of turn 6. So yeah, Crabomination just delivers a ton of value. It isn't very hard to cast, and you can even get it down ahead of schedule. All of that together, I think, makes Crabomination the biggest bomb in the set. So those are my picks for the 10 biggest bombs in Modern Horizons 3 Limited. If you want to own any of these super powerful cards, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to see my set review where I talk about every single card in this set, not just the 10 most powerful ones, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.